you know, you have done some talks and things, and, and what, what, what advice would you have for people learning to, you know, articulate themselves a little bit better? Like, I know for myself, I seem to be very good at learning just enough about a topic to kind of notice <clears throat> when something's being presented inaccurately, but I would have a really hard time explaining to you exactly why that is, so I, mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult for me to say, oh, I'm going to get up and speak on a subject I've been invited to speak a few times, and I've always said, eh, I don't know, I'm not so sure if I'm quite prepared for that. Is there something that, that you did over time or a way that you've uh, worked with your information in order to become a better speaker? I think for me, the speaking comes out of writing. <clears throat> and so, you know, quite early in my life, you know, when I was a teenager, even in school and everything, I I, I just like to write. And so I would always try and be trying to focus on that. Uh, so if, if I would say, I mean, it depends if you can write, but I would say that if you're going to give, someone asks you to, to speak, the, the, what you can do is you can just write out your speech. And what the great thing about that is that if you write it out, then you can have someone read it and that person reading it will tell you like, okay, this doesn't make sense. This is, this is chaotic. Like these, there's no connection between these ideas. And so that can help you to kind of hone your, your thing. And I would say at the beginning, just read out the speech, just read it, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, just to start and then slowly you'll gain confidence. That, that's, that's what I did too. Like the first, if you look at the first talks I gave, it's like, I've got my paper and I'm like reading out my paper, but I've really taken a lot of time to write it down and to think it through. And so it comes off okay. But then now more and more, I feel like I'm, I can kind of speak freely, but I still write it out. I write out all my speeches, even my YouTube talks. I write them all out. I can just write them out. And then, and then I put them in front of me. And as I'm recording, I know that I can always go back to the, to the text. Like some people are amazing at improvising yeah. and I'm not, I know that I'm not, I'm not totally, and I'm not that good yet, but I'm hoping that I'm getting better. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get, a, I, I get a little jealous when I watch uh, people like uh, Joe Rogan and, you know, he's just like the black belt of conversation. He can go for three hours, not looking at a note or anything else and just keep keep a conversation rolling and sound reasonably intelligent. Yeah. With <laughs> one person, you know, he invites this one guest and he's like, I, I saw that podcast he did with uh, James Damore and like, you know, James mm -hmm. Damore's He's very soft spoken. He's not like a yeah. he's not an entertainer. He's not like a, out no. there. And so Joe Rogan is just kind of pulling him along, you know, like pulling him <laughs> along the podcast and like, you know, and, and, yeah. and being even more kind of active and entertaining almost to, yeah. to kind of balance out the, the, the calmer, soft spoken uh, guest that he's got. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's really good at it. That's for sure. It's pretty impressive. I wonder, yeah. too, if maybe some of that came from his experience being a comedian. But I mean, even comedians, I mean, they write down all of their material, of course, usually first. So that's yeah, interesting. Jordan had the same advice about uh, that it comes from writing in a lot of ways, which, oh. of course, sometimes frustrates me a bit because that's a, I, uh, writing. I mean, I like it when it's done, but I find it to be such a frustrating process. I much prefer I'm much more of a like, you know, audio visual kind of person. And so it. It, it it's 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 a real struggle sometimes. Well, to sit there then do, you can do it the other way around. Like, why mm -hmm. don't you, you? One of the things you can do, and I this is I do that too. Like when I give a talk, mm -hmm. I make sure it's recorded. Okay. Uh, or even, yeah. even when I write down the speech, like I'll record myself reading it, uh -huh. and then like I'll put it in my earbuds and I'll work. And yeah. I can, I'll listen to like, let's say what speech, I'll listen to it all day, like just over and over and over. And mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm like picking out all the mistakes that I'm making, all the, you know, the, uh, the moments where I hesitate, all the moments where I stutter and I still stutter. I stutter all the time, sure. but you know, it's, it's like, it's, my mind is working even if I'm not doing it consciously. So mm -hmm. you could do that. You record yourself speaking in front of the camera and just watch it or listen to it. And then, you know, you'll be picking out the mistakes. You'll see it. Oh, here I'm hesitating. Here I'm mm -hmm. using the same word over and over, let's say, and and slowly your mind will do it on its own. I I mean yeah. maybe not, but it seems like you, if you just put the effort into it, I think that you'll find ways to do it. It's a good idea. If if, if nothing else, at least could help me identify every time I use the word like inappropriately. <laughs> I'm still trying to weed that one out. Oh man, 